This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can generate all of the proper logo files and formats for your clients using Adobe Illustrator. And if you'd like to sharpen your logo design skills, be sure to check out my Logo Design Academy, which is an 18-part video series where I teach my entire creative process for designing logos from start to finish. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So to get us started here in Illustrator, as you can see, I have this example logo that I'll be using for demonstrative purposes. The first thing we want to do is just make sure we're working in the CMYK color space. So we'll get a file, document color mode, and make sure we have CMYK selected. And the reason for that is because RGB is a color format that's meant for digital displays like computer screens and phones and, and laptops and so on and so forth. And it, it, it uses a, a color range that is generated using light. Whereas CMYK uses ink to generate those color ranges, making it more suitable for print. And the thing with logos is logos are used in a variety of different ways. They're not just going to be used on a website header or on a mobile application. They're also going to be printed on business cards, brochures, so on and so forth. So you want to make sure you provide your logo to your client in a way that it can be printed as well. So make sure you use CMYK color format for this. The second thing we want to do is just make sure we have our text converted to outlines. Uh, as you can see here for this logo, I used a stock font called Leto. I'm just going to select over the text here and go to type, create outlines. If it's already grayed out, that means you're good to go. You already created outlines from it. And the reason for that is because we don't want to send editable uh, files to our clients with a font file embedded because if they don't have that font installed on their system, they're not going to be able to edit their logo. It's not going to be displayed the same way it is on your computer. So make sure you convert all of your text to outlines first. And what we have to do now is create the different variations for this logo we'll be generating files for. And let me come over here to show you what I mean. I have three different variations for this logo. I have the full logo with both the, uh, the icon and the name, and I have just the icon by itself, and then I have just the name by itself. And we're going to be generating files for each of these. And if you notice here, I have different color variations for these as well. I have the full logo as it would work on a white background because it has the dark text. I have the full logo as it would work on a dark background because it has the light text. And then I have monotone variations where it's all white, one in all white, and one in all black. And I've done the same for each of these two formats, each of these three formats over here. So what I want to do next is I'm going to grab a folder. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to create a new folder here. As you can see, artboard.ai, this is the file I'm working on right now. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to name this logo files. This is going to be the folder that we end up sending to our client. And I'm going to open that folder. And within this folder, I'm going to create some new folders. I'm going to create a different folder for each of those three formats. So I'll create a new folder titled full lockup. That's for the entire logo design with the logo and the text. I'll create another folder for the icon, the iconic mark. And then I'll create another folder for the word mark, which is just the name, word mark. And then I want to create one more folder for the master file. So I'm going to go to file, new, master file, and I'll be addressing how we'll, I'll be addressing that in just a minute. So let me move this off of my screen so I can get back to work here. Uh, what we want to do now is just go through each of your individual logo files and make sure you group them all together by pressing Control G on the keyboard. You want to make sure they're all grouped together. I already have it set on my screen, but if you haven't done the same, just make sure to go through and group those all together. Uh, for this icon, it's just one single object, so it doesn't need to be grouped. That's already good to go. And what I want to do now is let me first get rid of this original logo over here. I'm going to take these logos and I want to size them at an appropriate size. So if I take these and bring these over here, you'll see in the width column, I already have the size is set at 484 pixels. That's kind of small. I normally like to generate logos at 1920 pixels, 1920 pixels in the largest dimension, but I've noticed recently that it causes a lot of problems with um, you know file size. So lately I've been using 1280, so I'm gonna make the width of this 1280 pixels. And I'm basing this on which dimension is the largest. The format of this logo design, the width is greater than the height, so I make the larger of those two dimensions 1280. If you have a logo where the, the height is larger than the width, make your height 1280. So I have that set as it is. I want to do the same thing for my icons over here. Uh, I'm going to set the width to 1280. There we go. And I'll do the same thing with my word marks over here. I'll set the width of these to 1280, and that is in pixels. Oops. Now what I want to do is I want to create individual artboards for each of these files. So I'm going to click on the artboards tool over here. And I'm just going to click on this first logo and it's going to create an artboard over it. I'm going to do the same thing down here. 
and just going to create individual artboards over each of these formats like that. And then I want to come over here and delete this original artboard by clicking on that X. And what I want to do now is just click on, go back through each of these artboards and name them according to their variation. So for this first artboard over here, I'm going to change the name to lockup dash color. Same thing over here, lockup dash inverted color. Over here, lockup white. And then the same thing down here, lockup dash black. And I'm going to go through and do the same thing for these other variations over here. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone through and I've named all of my files according to what they are. Icon, icon dash color, icon dash white, icon dash black. Same thing over here for the word marks. You get the idea. What we want to do now is let me go back to the select tool to get out of the artboard mode. And I want to save this as the master file. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to click on Logo Files, and I'm going to click on Master File, and I'm just going to name this master-file. This is the master file that your, your client or another designer they want to work with in the future maybe can edit if they want to work with these files uh, later on. And I'm also going to generate individual logo files for each of these as well. So I'll go ahead and leave the defaults here, click OK. And now we have a master illustrator file that we can work with. You'll also want to save an EPS copy of the master file as well. So we'll go to File, Save As, and I'll save this as masterfile.eps. And there we go. You leave the defaults as they are, and then you're good to go. Now we, what we have to do is we have to export each of these files individually. So to do that, I'm going to go to File, Export, and I'm going to click on Export for Screens. What I want to do now is select only the files that I want to export based on its file type. So we have the full lockup, the icon, and the word mark. In this, for this first batch, I'm just going to export the lockup. So let me clear the selection down here. I'm going to select just the full lockup logo files. And if you notice here, it's going to export each file with a name based on the name of its artboard, which is pretty convenient. So what I want to do now is choose the folder where I'd like to export these. These are going to be the full lockups. I'm going to export it to the lockup folder. And for the formats, I want to use PNG with no suffix and, and a 1x scale. The PNG is going to be a format where it has a transparent background. I want to add another format, uh, PDF and then another format, SVG. SVG is a, uh, an editable vector copy. So uh, your, your client or someone else can edit these logo files individually later on with any vector software they so desire. With the AI file, it's just, it's just specific to Adobe Illustrator because it's a proprietary format. So I always like to send SVG and PDF copies as well because those are editable vector copies that can be edited with any vector software. So once we have that set, I'll go ahead and click on Export Artboard. And let me open up my file over here just to make sure everything came out all right. If I click on full lockup, you'll see we have all of the different file formats here. The full lockup and all of its color variations and, and all of the formats. Let me go to view, large icons. There we go, looking pretty good. Let me set that back to list. Now I want to do the same thing with the icon. So we'll go to file, export, export as. Whoops, no, not export as. File, export, export for screens. Let me clear the selection. I'm going to choose just the icons here. And again, I'm going to choose the folder location for this one. We're not putting this in the lockup folder. We're putting this in the iconic mark folder. Select folder. Click uh, export artboard. There we go. And let me just double check that to make sure that came out all right. Perfect. And I'll do the same thing finally with the word mark here. I'll go to file, export, Export as, no, not export as, file, export, export for screens. I'm used to doing this with the keyboard shortcut, which is Control, Alt, E. I never, I never use this navigation menu over here. That's why I keep messing that up. Let me click on clear selection. Let me choose the word mark files. And once again, we're going to change the folder location to um, the word mark. And then go ahead and click export artboard. So if we go over here to our files now, just to double check the word mark, there it is. We now have our logo files. What I also like to include is a copy of a, uh, a logo format guide that I created. 
Let me open it up here to show you what I mean. This is a, a, a PDF document that I created. I send a copy of this to every single one of my logo clients because they don't really understand most of them don't understand what these file formats are and how they work. So I like to just put a brief little explanation of each of the formats there. And I put a, a, a little card with my contact information in case they need help at any point down the road. Or maybe they want to get back in touch with me to hire me again or refer me to one of their friends so they can hire me. And you get the idea. So uh, I like to include a copy of that with every, uh, with every client project. So to do that, let me uh, grab the copy. I have it over here on my other screen. Logo format guide.pdf. I would recommend creating one yourself. It's very, very useful. Otherwise, you'll have clients emailing you asking you like which file to use. You know, you get the idea. So let me come back up here. Let me grab my uh, folder once again. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back up out of here. We're going to have this logo files dot folder. This is the folder we're going to send to our client, but we need to turn that into a zip folder first. So for that, I like to use Seven Zip. It's a uh, handy little application that allows you to create zip folders. I'm just going to click and drag that into 7-Zip. Make sure we choose archive format as .zip. Click OK. And it should create a zipped folder right in place. And there you go. Now you have a zip folder that you can send to your client uh, with all of the completed logo files in. And uh, I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can go about creating logo files for your clients using Adobe Illustrator. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.